Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology and in this video we're going to be talking about the best revision strategies based on science. So your time is precious, I know that and that is why I'm going to be talking you through these five top revision strategies based on neuroscience and I'm going to explain why they are the best strategies. So you're going to be finding out about how your brain works in terms of learning and that is going to explain to you why these are the best revision strategies. So if you want to maximize your time and revision, making it as effective as possible to get you those grades, keep watching. So let's start just by going through a small bit of information about the brain. Your brain is made up of about 86 billion neurons. So those are the nerve cells that will connect together via synapses. Now this network of neurons and synapses is called a neural pathway and information is stored within those neural pathways. So the key to being able to remember information in the long term is maintaining these neural pathways. So I'm going to be talking you through the revision strategies that will help first of all create these connections and neural pathways and number two how you can strengthen them so that information is staying in your memory. So here's the size of how you actually remember and learn information. When you first take in information, it is just a series of disconnected facts in your brain. So think of it as disconnected circles. Now, when you make connections between these pieces of information, that is you processing, learning and understanding. And that's starting to create this neural pathway between your neurons and in other words, creating this memory. The more times you revisit and think about that fact and the connection, the stronger the neural pathway is. And scientists have found that five is the key number of times to revisit information to make it a really strong neural pathway and long-term memory. So that's the key number, five times. But I'm gonna be talking you through five strategies that will help you to make those connections and improve the strength of neural pathways in the first place. So revision strategy number one is one of my favorites, flashcards. Flashcards, when used correctly, are one of the most effective ways to improve your long-term memory of key facts. So I'm gonna start off by talking you through how you should actually create a flashcard. Or if you don't wanna create them, you can skip this step and go straight to getting my copy here that I've made for you with Mark Scheme Answers. But if you wanna make your own flashcards, the key thing is one card should only have one keyword and one definition on it. The idea is you need to really be able to isolate which bits of information you do remember versus don't. So if you put too many different pieces of information on one flashcard, you're not able to distinguish that. So keep it brief. One fact, one definition. The next thing is sometimes it can help if you have multiple ways to remember that fact. So you might want to have the definition and a picture to help you because that's another way of making these connections is having multiple encoding, which means the text plus an image. The next thing is how you use your flashcards. And I recommend you use something called the lightness system. And the lightness system is when you go through your pack of cards and any card you get correct, that goes onto a pile that you'll test yourself on tomorrow. Anything that you get wrong stays on the pile to test yourself again today. Then when you get it correct, it goes onto the tomorrow pile. Then fast forward to tomorrow, go through the entire pack again, and any that you get correct goes onto a pile for two or three days time. Any that you get wrong goes to tomorrow's pile. And this keeps repeating itself where basically any that you get correct, you bump forward quite a few days and you don't revisit them. The ones that you keep getting wrong, you revisit every single day. And in that way, you're prioritizing your time, spending your time really testing yourself repeatedly on the facts that you aren't remembering, which means those must be the facts that you don't currently have strong neural pathway connections. So we need to strengthen them by repeatedly going over it. The final key thing with flashcards is shuffle your pack. Your brain will just start to remember the order of the cards rather than remembering the information itself. So try and trip yourself up a bit and really test your neural pathways. Shuffle up the cards are in a different order and even do some the other way round. So maybe you have some where it's a description of the definition and you have to know the key word and some of them it's the key word and you have to say the definition. And that is the most thorough way to really improve your long-term memory of those key points using flashcards. Number two is blurting. And this is such an easy and free technique, which I love. 
Blurting is where you set yourself a topic. So let's say proteins. And you would then give yourself maybe five minutes to draw or write down everything you can remember about proteins. But this has to be from your memory, not using a book, notes, videos, or anything. Then when the time is up, that is then we can use your notes, your spec, maybe one of my videos, and fill in the gaps of what you forgot or you got wrong. And you need to fill that in using a bright colored pen so it really stands out the bits that you didn't remember as well. Now that's step one of blurting. The best way to make it as effective as possible to improve and strengthen your neural pathways and therefore your long-term memory is to repeat that same blurt later on in the week. Or if you've got a long time into your test, maybe repeat it in a week or two. And in repeatedly doing that same blurt, you're strengthening the neural pathways. Now, yes, that does mean you're gonna have to be doing lots of blurting on repeat, but each blurt session takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So it is pretty quick and easy to slot in as a daily or weekly revision strategy. Number three is what I like to call text to image or image to text. This is a strategy to help you to connect the dots in the first place rather than necessarily strengthen them. So it's how you can turn that disconnected information into something that you've processed, learned and understood. So there's two different ones, like I said, text to image or image to text. Text to image is when I would read something in my textbook or your school notes and then from that information, turn it into an image. And in doing that, you're really testing, have you understood the information enough that you can actually now turn it into a diagram to represent that information? The other way around, image to text, is if maybe you've got a diagram, a flow diagram or some process shown in your textbook, have a look at just that picture and then turn that into a description or a bullet point list describing what that image is showing. And again, that is processing the information, connecting the dots to make sure that you really do understand the information. So in other words, connecting those neural pathways and that will help you to understand that information. Number four is graphic organizers. And this can be any kind of activity where you're drawing connections between facts. One of the most common things to that is concept maps or mind maps, where you'll pick a topic and you'll show how everything is connected together. Now I've actually just released my own set of mind maps, concept maps for biological molecules, which I'll show you just here, where I've actually done that for you, where I'm showing you all the connections between the topics for biological molecules. Now, it is often more helpful if you do it yourself because then you are having to think of those connections and that helps you to understand it more. But I know some of you are incredibly pushed for time and you're looking for little shortcuts so that you can improve your grade, which is why I've made some there if you want to check out mine. Now, instead of just doing mind maps, there are other things you can do for graphic organizers. One thing that I do sometimes as an activity in lessons is give a selection of maybe 10 key terms. Students have to write those key terms in a circle and draw lines between them where there is a connection between those key terms. And then along that line, you write what the connection is. So maybe we have a key term of competitive inhibitor and active site. Now I could draw a connection between those because competitive inhibitors bind to an enzyme at the active site. And that could be another way that you're making connections to help you understand the information. Venn diagrams is another great way for you to look at similarities, differences between different concepts, or it could be between a DNA nucleotide and an RNA nucleotide, for example. And then number five is exam questions. This is where we draw it all together and check, have you connected the dots or connected the neurons sufficiently that you can now really answer these challenging application questions. And you're only able to do that if you do have a thorough understanding in the first place. So make sure you have done activities one to four before having a go at exam questions. Now to really get the most out of exam questions to improve, you need to be so strict with yourself in terms of timing, because timing can be a huge challenge when it gets to the exam, but also when you come to mark it, make sure you are being really harsh with your marking because that's what the AQA and other examiners are going to do. They're gonna stick exactly to that mark scheme, so you need to mark it in that same way so that you will start to repeatedly see common marking points that come up, strengthen your neural pathways for those key terms, and then gain a long-term memory of it. 
So hopefully at least one of those five techniques stands out to you as one that you really wanna try. I highly recommend that you try all five. A combination of them all is gonna be the best way to improve rather than sticking to one particular technique because all five have their own different benefits. And if you do want any shortcuts or guarantee that the information is correct, then why not check out the links below where I have my flashcards and my maps ready made for you. Or you've got the Active Recall booklet, which is a selection of all these concepts put into one. But for now, I'll leave it there and I'll see you in next week's video.